Welcome everyone to this presentation. In this presentation, I would like to speak about the flaps designs that are used to, to treat the periodontal diseases. I'm gonna to speak about the gingivectomy, Whitman original flap, Newman flap, modified flap, modified Whitman flap, a bically repositioned flap, and lastly, papilla preservation flap. Starting with gingivectomy. Gingivectomy is done when there is overgrowth of the gingiva, especially when you are taking some medication and sometimes it could be hereditary and that it becomes difficult for the patient to keep good oral hygiene measures. Now the first thing you do is to identify the pathological depth of the pocket that you want to cut by periodontal probe. Then you're gonna to perceive the areas that you want to cut by the periodontal probe. This, when you perceive bleeding comes and it will helps you and gives you as a guideline where exactly you cut. Now you will introduce the scalpel and you're gonna to cut angulated from the horizontal surface and that is called reverse pefil incision. You are gonna to give a pefil incision. And here is the scalpel where you cut according the bleeding dots are. If you notice, the bleeding dots are coming as a scalp sh shape and that it helps in maintaining the papilla and not overcut the papilla. Now then you are gonna to introduce warhead knife and that is the secondary incision where you try to retract the cutting tissue outside. Once you're done you are gonna to introduce the curates or the scalers to remove the soft tissue that already has been cutting and you, are, you want to clean if there is any calculus and so on. So the roots of the tooth structure will be exposed. After that you are gonna to place a dressing around 10 to 14 days and it shouldn't be bulky and you should be place it correctly that it retained by itself and not fall. Now moving to Widman original flap. In this flap you give two vertical or releasing incisions and then you are gonna to join these by gangival incision the same as gingivectomy refers pefil incision. Then you are gonna to elevate the flap by peristial elevator and you are gonna to expose the bone and the roots and the bone should be exposed around two to three millimeters. You are gonna to introduce the scalers to remove any affected tissues and so on, calculus and so on. After that you are gonna to use the surgical handpiece to recontour the bone so it gives a better healing. Once you're done you suture it back to its original position. There is another technique called Newman flap. It is not different than Whitman original flap. The only difference is that instead of cutting in uh, reverse pefil incision, you are gonna to go from the intracrafficular so you don't damage the gangival tissues. You go to the buckets and cut. And the same procedure is done. Moving to the modified flap. There is no vertical or releasing incisions are done. You only do intracrafficular incision, the same as Newman flap, and then you are gonna to expose the roots by, by retraction by the peristial elevator. The roots are exposed, the soft, the bone and the infected tissues. You are gonna to use the scaler to clear the infected tissues, and once you finish, you suture it back interproximal. Moving to a bikily repositioned flap. This video is I bring it from a YouTube and so on the other videos. The a bikily repositioned flap, the vertical incision is done first and then this is the reverse pefil incision is done. This is the primary incision and there is other incisions. Vertical incision. Now he is trying to 
uh, separate the cutting tissues, the gangival tissues from the attached gingiva. To help him to elevate the flap. And here he is using the peristial flap. And the same is done in the lingual side. Then the second incision is the intracraficular incision. So he makes sure that it is freely mobile in order to be removed. And the last incision is the horizontal incision. Now he is introducing the scalars to remove the infective tissue or the gingival margin. After that, he's introducing the scalars and trying to remove any sharp surfaces in the root surfaces, roughness, and so on. He's doing recontouring to the bone, so better. Now, a bicular reposition flap is done. Yes, a bicular reposition flap is, is you don't return the flap to its normal position, however, you return it abically from the tooth structure. This will allow clear access for the patient to clean. Moving to a modified Widman flap. A modified Widman flap is the same as a bicular position flap. The two differences is you don't do any vertical incision and another difference is when you return the flap again you return it to its normal position and this is the difference between modified Widman flap from a bicular position flap. He has done the first incision, which is or the initial incision, which is the first baffle incision. And now he is trying to separate the cutting incision from the attached gingival. After that, he is doing intracraficular incision, the same as the previous video. And there is another, the third incision is the horizontal incision but the uh, dentist did not do it in this case. He is introducing the scalars to remove the infected tissues as well the soft tissue that he is already uh, being cut in. The main idea of a uh, modified Whitman flab is you have uh, an easy access of the scalars between the roots and that's it after you have done you suture it back to its normal position and this is a picture after the healing moving to the last video which is the babula preservation lab So how we do that? Intracraficular incision is done. She started by doing that. The idea of doing that, now notice that she is going to horizontally through the papilla and she will not do the intracraficular incision in that region between the incisors. And in later on you will understand why this technique is done and you then she continues doing intracraficular incision and then releasing incision has been done to elevate the flap now she will tries to separate the flap from the bone surface yes just try to separate it here it is And this is the infra bony defect where they are trying to treat in the central incisor. Now the idea of the papillary preservation is to transfer the papilla between the central incisors from the buccal side to the palatal side. 
now she is cutting around five millimeter in so she make it fully mobile and then she will try by bursial elevator to push it into the palatal side And she will do the same uh, flab into in the palate, palatal side. Now she is doing the recontouring of the bone, cleaning of the any inflamed tissues, and here it is after 10 days and it's sutured back thank you very much and this was my video i hope it was beneficial